Are doing good? Okay, hi. Uh, <coughs> today I'm going to share about PSR 15 HTTP request, uh, server request handlers. Uh, just a bit about myself. My name is Zion. I'm a Zen certified engineer. Currently, I'm working as a freelance web developer so, uh, and a part time IT consultant. If you want to find out more details, you can go to my website at zion.sg. So, just a show of hands, uh, who here knows what PSR One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, very good. So my next slide is not wasted. No, that was done using uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. <laughs> hey, we are web developers, right? Okay. So, um, okay, just a list of some PSLs by PHP FIG, the framework in the FIG. Okay. Um, PSL zero. So these are all standards. It's just interfaces. It's not compulsory. It's just PHP standards recommendation. Okay. So you are recommended to use it but uh, it's not compulsory. So PSR is your auto-loading standard. So in the past, when we wrote our own scripts, our own libraries using plain PHP, so how do we use other people's PHP libraries in our own code? We just use an include statement. But sometimes uh, we have to hard code the directories and now, so it's a bit uh, uh, troublesome. So later on, they came out with this PSR zero. So basically it says that you must have namespaces in your PHP classes and uh, it must reside in a certain uh, directory structure. So Composer makes use of PSR0. So right now, for a lot of our PHP projects, we just put uh, composer.json and we put composer install. And everything, they will pull all the projects from GitHub, from packages, and uh, you can easily use components from other PHP projects in your projects. <coughs> This also enables, for example, if you are using a Zen framework application, you can pull a component from Symfony framework and use it in your Zen framework project. Uh, next one would be uh, PSR1, basic coding standard. So it says that um, your PHP files must be encoded in UTF-8 without the byte order mark. And certain other things that like how you should name your variables, uh, it should be using camel case. That means I say the first letter is a small letter. How do you name your classes? Your classes should start with a capital letter, Pascal case or Studly caps. To add on, they have a PSL tool. This is where all the braces, spaces come in, your indentation. Use spaces for indentation, four spaces. Uh, does your brace for the class, uh, opening of the class, does it go on the same line or the next line? Your if else statement, does the opening brace go on the first same line as the if statement or the next line? So things like that. So it is to reduce cognitive friction. So when someone, uh, let's say I look at your, uh, someone else's uh, PHP code, I won't feel like, oh, it's all over the place, all your indentations are inconsistent. So everyone is uh, going towards PSR2. <coughs> PSR4 is an uh, update to PSR0. So basically, PSR0 is deprecated now. Uh, it's, just, it's a bit more flexible with regards to the auto-loading file structure. And there are many, many more. Currently, there are 10 accepted PSRs, one in review, two draft, five abandoned, and one deprecated. So the idea why these people came together to form the PHP FIG, it is for the project representatives to talk about common things and to find ways to work together as PHP de developers. They don't want any like uh, uh, enclave that say, oh, you are from Zen framework, you are from Symfony framework, you are from Drupal. No, we are all PHP developers. Let's uh, try to make our job easier so that let's say if I move to another company that uses a different framework, I will find the learning curve less steep. 
Now there are about 13 voting members in PSR uh, from various projects like Composer, Drupal, Magento, Pair, and Zen Framework. So why do these projects adopt PSR? Because they want the developers that use their frameworks or projects and they want the developers that contribute to their projects to adopt best practices and to learn best practices. So PHP FIG. <coughs> You can find out more on the PHP FIG website over here. Now, before we even start talking about PSR 15, we have to learn know what is middleware. Before we even talk about middleware, we have to know what is PSR 7 HTTP message interfaces. <coughs> so let's start with PSR 7 HTTP message interfaces. Now, in the past, that will be about 25 years ago. This would be how uh, I would write uh, a simple script to process a uh, form submit, form submission, and then output the variables from the query string. Very simple script. Uh, today, or uh, probably five, six years ago, when I was using, uh, started using Zen framework, this would be how I would write it. I have a controller class extending a uh, abstract action controller proprietary to Zen framework. And supposing, let's say, I have a test route and I have an index page, so I'm a, I must call it index action. So how do I get a request? Uh, abstract action controller, arrow get request. Uh, and then from the request, I check where is the post, and I'm returning a view model. <coughs> there are many ways of doing this. The code cannot be reused. Different frameworks, different way of doing things. Every framework comes up with their own abstraction of HTTP request and response. There's new things to learn, you cannot switch easily. So let's say I'm learning Zen Framework. I go to another company, they're using Laravel. I have to relearn a lot of things, the syntax and how the classes work together. Now, can you see a similarity? So basically, you're receiving a request, let's say from the form, processing it and returning a response. <coughs> so what do frameworks abstract? Form post. Over, extract the request URI for routing purposes, handle file uploads, input and out, output streams, writing the files, and returning of response. So every framework, Zen, Symfony, KPHP, CodeIgniter, Laravel, they come up with proprietary classes and ways to handle this, which cannot be reused easily outside their framework. So let's look at uh, a uh, a simple form of an HTTP request message. It has this form. A post, which is the verb, a path, uh, the version, the host header, and the body. A response has a similar structure. It has HTTP 1.1, the version, 200 as the status code, OK as the reason phrase, content type header, and again, a body. So this is a very big overview of um, PSR 7. Every box you see here is the interface. Now, PSR, recommendation. So they only recommend an interface. They don't detect your implementation. You can implement however you want. You can even use C as an underlying implementation. They don't care. As long as you provide these interfaces. So someone says that I'm PSR 7 compatible. That means if by using classes, they will exist. Okay, let's look at the first one. I'll only go through a few, not the, not the full thing. Message interface. So message interface has these methods. Get headers, get header, get body, with header, with body. A note about with header and with body. This one will return new instances. Objects are passed by reference in PHP. Hence the uh, concern about immutability. Now, if I were to modify the body here, just like that, it may affect the original object which is used somewhere else. So to play safe, they have this with header and with body methods that were explicitly written. Request interface extends message. A request is basically a message. So a request has a get method, get URI, get stream. Uh, streams are used for bodies. And uh, the new request is how you can chain the methods together to return a new instance. In this case, there will be 
four new instances. So if I go to Zen framework and they implement PSR7 request, and I go to Symfony framework and they implement PSR7 request, I can use the exact same methods and they will still work. So this one will reduce the, reduce the learning curve for us PHP developers. Response interface also, it is a type of message, so it extends a message interface. A request has a status code, a reason phrase, a body, and uh, same thing, you have the with methods. Now, server request interface extends request interface. Basically, it's a time all these server super globals, how to get the query params, the pass body, and the uploaded files. And supposing, let's say, using a framework, after routing, you want to get a route parameter. So they have uh, request attributes. So there are many more interfaces in PSR7, but I won't be covering them because middleware, the next topic, only uses these interfaces. Okay, middleware. What is middleware? Middleware is basically a lambda uh, black box. It is in a request, a PSR7 request, and returns a PSR7 response. I don't care how it is implemented, it is just a black box. Okay, uh, this is a schematic of a Dev Star. Uh, I don't have a laser pointer here. So, there are many ways of using middleware. One way is what we call the onion star, the onion that you eat for your food, uh, where you peel off layer by layer. <coughs> now, this uh, Dev Star, it is a powerful weapon in Star Wars that can wipe out planets from just shooting something out of its cannon. So the Death Star cannon consists of many layers. So for simplicity's sake, look at the red color part. There are four distinct parts. A red rectangle, a red square underneath it, a red oval and a red core. So imagine, imagine the cannon sucks in light. Okay, I know I'm pushing it. Okay. <laughs> Sussing light and that's like the request and then it processes it through all the four layers and then it shoots out a powerful laser that is the response so now let's come with a easier to understand analogy okay this is the typical diagram used for illustrating a middleware so you see the application your routed endpoint is at the core <coughs> supposing if i were to write basically some uh, URL that I can call with some parameters and return me some information. Now supposing I write a REST API with 1,000 endpoints, 1,000 URLs. And supposing I have one class for each endpoint. So let's say I have one class that's 1,000 PHP files. Supposing I want to add authentication. Okay, that means before I even go to let's say slash demo, I want to check for authentication, check whether the person has the right to use this endpoint. Do I go to each of the 1000 classes and then add one and say, if this is authenticated, con uh, continue, else uh, throw exception. Or is it, if I say like uh, I use annotations, I add an annotation say add is secure authenticated, that is 1000 classes. With middleware, there's no need. So the router endpoint imaging is the application call, the one, the red color in the middle. And I will just add one authentication middleware on top of it. The authentication middleware will basically receive the request, check. If not authenticated, I throw back a response. It doesn't even reach the call. If it's authenticated, I'll pass the request, the same request, the same PSR7 request, and pass it into the call which is the REST API endpoint and the uh, API endpoint will basically process it through all the response the response will pass back through the authentication middleware you can see it along so basically it's like onion you go in through the same four layers you go out through the same four layers what if I want to do logging same thing I will just add another logging middleware so let's say the third the outer the outer most layer so when the request comes in, the login middleware will receive the original request. Log it, I put it in a database. After that, I just pass the request down to the authentication middleware. 
After that, authentication middleware will pass it down to the REST API endpoint, which is the core application. Core application will return a response back up to the authentication middleware. Authentication middleware will pass the response back to the login middleware. And the login middleware can just log the response, let's say, throw in the database again. So this is how the onion style of the middleware works. Now in code, I assume that we are all developers here. It is very simple. A middleware is basically like a function that takes in a PSR7 server request interface, takes in a response interface and a callable next, which is supposed to be the next middleware. Now remember this signature because it will change in PSR15. So we can have like a factory production line, like a human, like a human chain. So the human chain will just keep passing along this server request, the response, and the next middleware to call. So it's like a factory production line. Before, before the advent of middleware, what we have is framework-specific methods, parent classes, and naming conventions. So this is how it will look like probably request and your view model, which is tied to the framework. After now that we are using middleware, okay. Notice that this class extends the Zen specific class, abstract Azure controller. Next one is a plain old PHP class. It does not extend anything. <coughs> the only thing it has is the invoke method. The invoke method is the middleware signature. This in the PSR7 server request, a PSR7 response, and a next. And if you look at the content, get pass body, get body, these are all PSR7 methods. It will work if I take this class and put it in Zen framework, which is Slim and Laravel, which already have a PSR7 wrappers. So someone may ask me, Sian, uh, but um, you look at the renderer, the renderer is uh, it's not PSR7. So uh, doesn't this break uh, compatibility? No, it doesn't. Because the renderer is passing via the constructor through dependency injection. So your application, we should probably have some dependency uh, manager. You can just configure it and throw in whatever kind of renderer or object that you want. You can easily replace it with a dummy renderer as well for testing. Now, Symfony has Symfony bundles. Zen Framework has Zen Framework modules. Laravel has Laravel packages. So people are solving the same problems over and over again by wrapping them up as framework-specific solutions. So that was a problem. So the, the onslaught of PSR server giving way to middleware allows us to do much more and break away from framework silos. So you are no longer Oh, I'm from Zen Framework, I'm from Symfony Framework. No, we are all PHP developers. Okay. <coughs> finally, actually not finally, so quite a lot of slides. PSR 15, HTTP server request handlers. Why bother? Uh, the signature is already there, right? PSR 7 and there's a middleware signature that's used by a lot of frameworks and projects, right? So why bother defining a new PSR 15? Uh, the standard standards are cartoon. So PSR7 does not define request handlers or middleware. So middleware has existed in PHP many since PSR7, a lot of frameworks have adopted middleware. So PSR15 provides a formal standard. It enables any middleware to run in any framework. It eliminates duplicate effort duplicate interfaces and minor discrepancies in the method signature. So previously in middleware, okay, let's look at the NETS. NETS is basically another middleware that uh, passes in the request and response. NETS was just a callable. No type hinting, no type can be enforced. Now with PSR 15, we have a request handler interface. Uh, as a handle method, it takes in the PSR7 request and returns a PSR7 response. Okay, uh, no, we are not using the underscore underscore invoke because it's less transparent than the name method. So let's move on to middleware. Again, the same old middleware signature. Look at the invoke, the magic invoke method. It takes in the server 
a response interface and a next callable. Now with PSL 15. PSL 15 defines a middleware interface. It takes is a method process method. It takes in the PSL 7 request or PSL 15 request handler and returns a PSR7 response interface. All these are interfaces, they do not detect the implementation. Now why don't why didn't they reuse the magic info method? Because it will conflict with existing middleware implementations. And they look at some other frameworks. Uh, Symphony HTTP kernel uses handle method. The Zen framework dispatchable interface uses uh, dispatch method. So in computer science, there are the two most difficult things is naming things and uh, invalidating cache. So they finally say we are just processing stuff, right? So let's just call it process, lah. Okay. Now the signature has been changed. Previously, it is in the request, response, and the next. Now it is request handler. This is called a single pass. Currently, there are two, the two most common approaches to middleware is double pass and single pass. So double pass, those people who use ExpressJS uh, with Node.js, they'll be more familiar with that. It is in a request, a response, and the next middleware and produces a response. Single pass is they take in a request, the next middleware, and produce a response. There are currently 23 projects using the double pass signature, Slim, Zen, versus three projects using the single pass signature, uh, Gazer, StackPHP, and Laravel. Single pass has been used many years, those people who use StackPHP. And double pass is newer, it's mainly adopted by people who started adopting PSR7. But there's a problem. Now, this is a double pass the old middleware signature, taking a res request, response, and the next middleware. What's the problem? First problem, the first middleware will be passed an empty response object. It's empty, yeah? but there's no guarantee that it will stay the same because it will be modified by subsequent middleware. So the state will be totally different. Incorrect headers from previous middleware. Now, supposing I say I have a cache middleware, so it processes the request and the response says, okay, um, I will add one cache header. Then after that, it goes to the next middleware. And the next middleware decides that mm, there's some problem, there's a finder error. So I'll just take the response that it passed to me, right? I will just say, uh, okay, it has a finder error, and then I throw back the response. So when the client receives a response, error response with cache headers. So it's like, Totally wrong case. The headers are totally wrong because you don't know what the previous middleware injected. Corrupted body content. Supposing the first middleware writes to the body, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy old dog, pass the rest request and the response to the next middleware. The next middleware will just take the response and write the lazy old fox and throw back the response. So what we what will be the final content? The lazy old fox jumps over the lazy old dog because the newer content was shorter. They didn't overwrite everything, they only overwrite partially. Now, some people say that, uh, no, 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 we pass in an empty response in the first place, right? So that subsequent middleware don't need to know how to create a new response. So we can skip the implementation. Uh, but that's not a valid excuse because it can be solved better with factories. You are using middleware in an application. The application usually will have uh, factories and dependency managers. Use that. And PSR 17, not PSR 7, not PSR 15, PSR 17, HTTP factories will give a standard approach to factories. So we are waiting for that. And fifthly, next. In the old middleware signature, it was a callable. There's no way to enforce type, no way to enforce three typing. You cannot be assured that next is definitely a middleware. So finally, they decided, okay, screw the 23 projects, I don't care. Let's choose the single pass approach. Taking the request 
and then the next middleware and return the response final okay if you want to implement uh go ahead if you don't want sorry for more i know laravel just pull out from the ps uh, php fig uh, uh membership okay so yeah it's totally uh voluntary so let's look at an example of how this psr 15 psr 15 basically only detects two interfaces so let's see how it may be used now um firstly the braces are not according to psr those who have noted that because i don't have space now this is a request handler a request handler only needs to implement one method the handle method taking in the psr7 request and returning a response so basically this one will take in the fallback handler you can add middleware you will maintain a queue of middleware and then when we executing the first middleware you will pass itself in okay just remember this this is a queue request handler queue of middleware how you add to the queue use the add method add method is not defined by psr15 it is your own application this is a plain php class it does not extend any concrete class so you can put any other methods you like as long as you put the handle method now in your actual application bootstrap basically your applications in desktop.php this is how you implement it i create a fallback handler okay um, basically you just re uh, return a not found response my application basically is made up of the queue request handler i pass in the fallback handler and i add, a mid uh, add middleware i add a authorization middleware i add a routing middleware and the very last line i will just call the handle method of the queue request handler now the how do i how do i pass in the uh, server this is what I mean by factory. In your application, you will have uh, factories that can take all the super globals and then form a PSR7 request. This implementation, the request handler does not need to know how other middleware are being created, how it is being added to the middleware. It only provides an end method. It doesn't need to know how the PSR7 request or response is being implemented. Doesn't matter. The middleware is executed in the order that it is added to the queue. And the generating of the uh, fallback response is up to the developer, not found or a uh, default page. Those who have done compilers in the studies before, right? You, you heard of a compiler that can compile itself, an interpreter that can interpret yourself. So basically, right now, it's like this is a request handler they can handle handle itself they can handle the middleware itself so it's kind of a recursive uh, uh logic over here uh this example is taken from the link uh, over there it's taken from the psr15 meta documents now in the example i'm passing the authorization middleware and routing middleware so authorization middleware implements a psr15 middleware interface it has a method called process which takes in a psr7 request and a psr15 request handler so basically the code just if there's no need for authorization pass to the request handler if the request is not authentic or authorized return the error response if need authorization pass to the handler the handler will just return a response psr7 response and then when it returns i'll just sign okay this thing is authorized already it's been signed by me or i can no sign and i'm returning back so the middleware is not concerned of how the request handler is implemented it just uses it to produce a response when preconditions are met the other middleware that was in the example is the routing middleware so uh, the router is injected via the constructor okay and in the process method of the middleware interface you will just pass the request to the router and check uh, match or not yes match then i will get a request handler from the router to handle it so the router 
returns a result which has a get handler method to return the PSR15 request handler. If nothing is routed, no route is matched, I'll just pass it to the request handler. So the second the second argument in this now um if you are interested in uh, more about middleware and actually co doing coding, you can actually look at Zen Expressive Tree. Okay, Zen Expressive Tree, you can just run this command in your terminal, composer, create project, blah blah blah. PSR 15, middleware. PSR 7, consumes PSR 7 HTTP messages, routing. When you first run the composer command, they will actually let you choose what router library you want to use. You don't need to use Zen router, this is by Zen framework. Uh, you can use other like Aura router or Pimper. Dependency injection. Middleware only defines one method. You can inject all your dependencies, all the other middleware or any helpers that you want via the constructor. Templating. Is that is by Zen framework, you don't need to use Zen view. You can use a uh, tweak, moustache, plate, whatever. So with this, uh, go back and try it. Just search for Zen expressive tree, and then you can try it out. And with that, may the first review happy Star Wars Day. Thank you.